Well, good evening, everybody. This is John Unell from Schuylkill Haven, Pennsylvania, a.k.a. John I Fly. And it is Friday evening, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on the 11th of June. I trust that everybody is starting the weekend off right. And... Uh, over here in Pencil, East Central Pennsylvania, it's been raining most of the day. Little breaks here and there, but uh, the temperatures, I'll tell you what, they feel great. So I'm not going to complain. It was like upper 60s today. I think tomorrow they want it in the mid to upper 70s, but uh, I'll take that over 90 degrees any day. And anyway... Uh, what's been going on? Well, like we should really be surprised when we find out that uh, Donald Trump had his Department of Justice do a little, uh, shall we say, prying around. Hmm. Yeah. He, uh, turns out he wanted information on Democratic Congress members, some of them. I know Adam Schiff is one of them. There's some other people uh, from Apple. Um, let's see here if I can read my own writing. Yeah. The Department of Justice sent a broad request in February of 2018 to uh, Apple Company as part of its investigation that collected data from members of Congress, not only just Congress people, but their staffers as well, and, and their families, and uh, I heard even a minor. I don't know if they were 14 or 15 years old or whatever, but <clears throat> they didn't go into much detail about the minor. But can you imagine that? Anybody that Donald Trump looks at as a enemy, a political enemy. This is what he did. He stooped real low. He used the Department of Justice in a manner that was never intended to be that way. You see, Donald Trump liked to think that everything circled around him. It encompassed Donald J. Trump. So any agency in the government, rather than serving the people, like, for instance, the Attorney General, Bob Barr, he made uh, Bob Barr his own personal attorney. Doesn't work that way, Donnie. This is the United States of America. You can't sit there and hijack departments to suit yourself. Now the truth is coming out, and we're seeing what happened. I mean, I'm sure we kind of already knew that he was corrupt and doing things behind, you know, closed doors and keeping it away from the American people's eyes. But now it's starting to come out because he's no longer there. So this is turning out to be an interesting situation. Now the thing was, Apple was under a non-disclosure agreement, okay? They were not allowed, in other words, to uh, tip people off that uh, the Department of Justice was investigating certain people, okay? The order was extended three times. Now, each time it was extended for a whole year. It lasted for a whole year. So three times, I guess three years, you might as well say, this non-disclosure agreement was extended. Nobody had any idea that they were being investigated, that uh, Donald Trump targeted. But the fourth time, they didn't extend it because Joe Biden came into office. And uh, they informed the affected customers on May the 5th of 2021. So that was only last, last month. So the, tr the, the truth is coming out and it's revealing the dirt that Donald Trump was up to.
He's no good, I'm telling you. I can't picture him being reelected again. Because if he's reelected again, it doesn't speak much for the people who elected him. I'll tell you that right now. So anyway, we shall see what happens. I know the Department of Justice, uh, they're, uh, I'm, well, I, they, he didn't even mention it, Garland. Um, I know he's, he's vowing to protect voters' rights, which he should, because the Republicans are up to no good there either, between gerrymandering and everything else and making it hard for people to vote, like the African Americans and other minorities. Well, hopefully uh, Attorney General Garland will uh, you know, take a hand on that. He's supposed to, but anyway. Another thing, another news, uh, the Chicago police officer, now get this, these people, I'll tell you what, these people that participated in the January 6th, I call it insurrection, they call it rioting, but uh, 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 no, no, no. I think there was a little more planning that went on, not just a riot. It was an invasion into our uh, center of government. Well, anyway, one of the people that was there was a Chicago police officer uh, was arrested. I'm trying to see here if I copied his name down. I don't think I did. It was, it was hard to pronounce. Sorry about that, but he was arrested in connection to the January 6th riot. Now, this gentleman is facing five federal misdemeanors. I know some of them was, the charges was he knowingly entered or remaining in a restricted building without lawful authority. Okay, that's the one charge. Another charge is violent entry and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds. Now this is a Chicago police officer. Go figure that one out. Well, anyway, um, he was able to, to be released on, on bail or bond or bail, whatever. So, he's out, but he's going to have to answer for his crime. The thing is, I believe they said there was an identifying uh, item on him. I'm not sure if it was his Chicago police badge or what it was, but these people, I tell you what, these Trumplicans, that's what I call them, they don't have any brains in their heads. They don't think. I mean... Well, maybe they do think, but it's not a good thinking because they're so proud to support Trump. And they wore this badge. I think he had his badge on or some identification that showed he was a Chicago police officer. I mean, after all, let's get ourselves puffed up and in the news. I'm a Chicago police officer. And I don't like, I don't like the current, the fact that the current president, Joe Biden, was elected. And oh, that's fake, and the elections are fake, and, and everything was rigged, and all that nonsense. And they think that, oh, well, I'll show my badge off, I'm proud, yeah. And what they're doing is they're making it easier for the FBI and the police to track them, and that's exactly what happened. They were, it said that he, um, they traced his cell phone and everything else. Uh, you know, they don't think that, well, there's such things as cell phone towers and their signals ping off the towers. And they keep a record of that with your cell phones. Like, duh. Unless they don't really care to get caught. Well, this is one of them. They're pushing close to 550 people now, I believe that are arrested. So, you know what? I I, uh, I don't feel sorry for them. That reminds me, I wrote some stuff down today 
or was it from, it was from, let's see, it might have been this morning. I was in a hurry and I wanted to make sure I wrote it down. CNN had an interview and they had one of the um, people that are charged with being in the insurrection or riot. His name is Anthony Antonio, okay? I don't know where he's from, but um, he had his attorney with him. And he was being interviewed. I believe John Berman, yeah, John Berman interviewed him this morning on early day. And um, you want to hear the excuse that uh, Anthony Antonio made for why he was at the Capitol? Well, here a quote. I went to the Capitol because Trump asked him to. My president asked me to. That's what he said. Makes me wonder. He was over uh, in England and they told him to jump off the London Bridge. Would he do it? I don't know. I just, I think that was a very, very weak argument. If you were to watch the interview, you would have seen what I, uh, known what I, what I'm talking about here. It's just, they tried to press him on it. Well, he says, I only did what my president told me to do, and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And the, now, they asked the attorney also, and, um, about why he thought Anthony went to the Capitol. And, uh, the attorney said, uh, basically he said, I guess he, he's more or less implying that Trump was very per persuasive. But he goes here, he goes, Trump was like Mussolini and other dictators. Yeah, don't tell, tell me something I don't know. I tend to think Trump was more like Mussolini. If you ever notice him, he had his arms like this all the time and that scowl on his face. Yeah, okay. But his attorney said Trump was like Mussolini and other dictators. He was totally opposite of what he should have done. No shit, really. He said if Trump was supposed to go left, he'd go right. Well, of course, he's a spoiled brat. He was always like that growing up. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. And it didn't matter who he drug down with him, and that's what happened. But when I hear these people say, oh, I had to respond to the call of my president. I mean, give me a break, people. Are you kidding me? I mean, don't you have a mind of your own? I think he, the same guy, Anthony Antonio, basically was, what was it? The word he used, foxitis. He was under the influence of Fox News. Well, you know something? I don't doubt him. You know, I have a family member that's the same way. They got to watch Fox News. You don't get the good, true news unless you watch Fox News. Right. Unbelievable. Well, anyway. He's going to pay for his stupidity, let's put it that way. And I don't feel sorry for any of these people. You know, there was that other guy, too, that he was, had his feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk. I think he's trying to get out now. Oh, you know, he's using some excuse. I don't have it in front of me here, but... Uh, no, I thought I wrote it down here. I guess not. If I did, I moved it. But anyway, he's trying to get out of it. Listen. He knew what he was doing. Don't let these people bullshit you. They knew what they were doing. You know, you go on to federal property and you're not authorized to, you're going to get your ass in trouble. I mean, think, people. There's cameras all over the place nowadays. You know? Well, anyway. 
while that's going on, uh, President Biden, he's in the uh, United Kingdom over in England at the G7 summit. I'm going to tell you something. I was watching bits and pieces of it. But in the beginning, the meeting this morning, they were, um, I think it was afternoon over there. I think they're like eight hours ahead of us. But uh, I believe his name is Prime Minister Johnston. He came right out and he said it's like a breath of fresh air with Biden. He said he was so happy to see everybody here in person. One person I'm glad that, I'm sure they're glad it's not there anymore is Donald J. Trump. Last year, I'll never forget it, when John, I, Donald Trump, he didn't have a clue as to what to do. He didn't know what he was doing. Like I said, he's incompetent. So, needless to say, he was a national embarrassment to us in the United States, but uh, you could tell the other leaders were at ease if you if you watch um, the president of France uh, had his arm around uh, Joe Biden. You never saw that with uh, Trump. I don't blame them really, you know. But uh, we're going to see what happens. I know President Biden's going to be meeting with. Uh, President Putin of Russia and uh, I believe that's going to be his last stop that's going to be an interesting situation um, according to uh, Putin's spokesman uh, he said let's see here if we have it says uh, he claims that the US Russia relations are so poor that only a summit can sort them out. This should be interesting because when Donald Trump was over there representing the us, he was a national embarrassment. I mean, Putin had him under his thumb. It's, it's very obvious. I don't think President Biden's going to put up with the nonsense. I think he's going to stand firm and he's going to tell Putin where we stand. I'm sure that one of the topics that's going to come up is the uh, ransomware that this Russia criminal element is doing. And you can't tell me that Putin doesn't know what's going on. He knows. I mean, this, this element, you know, what are they up to? Why are they doing it? Well, they're making bucks. What do you think they're doing with the bucks? I'm sure a lot of it's going to... Uh, the Russian government in Putin's pockets, or other funding uh, of groups that may be uh, planning terrorist attacks or whatever as far as uh, cyber attacks or what have you. You don't know what they're, what they're going to do with it, but it, it's obviously not going to be for good. That's for sure. I like that one uh, instance, I believe it was I'm trying to think. I think it was today. Uh, they asked Biden what, what he was going to say to Putin. And Biden said, he said, says he's going to tell Putin what he needs to know. And that's true. So I'm kind of curious. I can't wait to see what happens. So, um, yeah, we've, we've had a pretty busy week. Um, <clears throat> it's about all I have right now. Um, there's so much going on in the world today. I mean, I know over in the, the West Coast and the western part of the United States, they're in a drought. I wish I could give you people some of the rain we have here. Wednesday... We had two storms come through. The first one, I had to go down to the convenience store. I wanted to pick up some newspaper and something else. And oh boy, this showers came through. It got real gusty. Of course, I they weren't my trusty umbrella, you know, and 
thinking, oh yeah, I'm not going to get wet, I've got my umbrella. Couldn't just be a regular rainstorm, mind you, but I'm, I'm, I you know, sooner walk out of the store and it started getting gusty and pouring rain. And we're not talking from straight up and down. It was like pouring sideways. So I'm sitting there with the umbrella like this, trying to hang on to it. Needless to say, I got home. I, I have hiking boots I had on. They were soaked through and through. And, my pants were soaked through and through. So much for the umbrella. Then not too long after that, maybe within the half hour, another storm came through and that one was wicked. I mean, we're talking gusty winds, downpours, and dangerous lightning. I'm sitting there watching outside my door and it was like this one huge crack or stroke of lightning on that. That's it. And the wind's blowing in toward me in the door. I just shut the door and I, oh well. Anyway, that was exciting and fun. Wish I could have gave you all that rain, West Coast people and everybody out in the Western United States, but strange weather. But to listen to uh, certain people, we don't have climate change. Oh well. Anyway, I'm just rambling on here. Um, I just wanted to thank you for taking the time to listen in. Uh, remember, you can find me on YouTube as John I Fly, and on Facebook as under my real name, John R. U. N. E. L. C. U. N. E. L. L. On YouTube, please like and subscribe. Don't forget to share. And most of all, I have there's a comment section there. Feel free to tell me what you think. Share your comments. Um, I'd like to be uh, able to read and see what you think. How do you feel about the uh, what's going on, the different stories, news stories and all? Um, but make sure, make sure you uh, share, like, and subscribe. I would deeply appreciate that. We also got to get, um, well, I remember, let's see if I can remember from memory, but uh, call your senators about H.R. Uh, 1, For the People Act. Um, let's see if I remember the, the capital switchboards, 202 area code, 224, I believe it's 3121. I'm going to double check that now to make sure if I'm looking up, you'll know why I'm on the computer here. Uh, hang on just a second. Yeah, it's area code 202-224-3121. Two, two two, two you just call that number and a switchboard operator will connect you directly with the Senate office that you want to deal with. Call your, your local senators or your federal senators. And not only that, I'm telling you, call Joe Manchin too while you're at it. That guy, I tell you what, he, he's messing everything up, you know? Forgive me for flipping through my notebook here, but so. Uh, I just want to X this out so I know I, I gave it. I have my own little system here. But yeah, call him too. People, we got to remember one thing. When you vote next time, like um, the 2022 especially, let's get more Democrats in there, okay? Then we can tell Manchin to go fly a kite. Okay, everybody, that's about it. Uh, I could go on and on here, but I don't want to ramble. I'll save it for the next time. Thanks again for taking the time to watch. Again, like I said, like, subscribe, and share. Share it with other people that you know are inclined to the blue dot wave, you know. We need to get more Democrats in office and, and fight for the democratic values. And by the way, I just remembered... June is 
National Pride Day, or Pride uh, Month, I should say. So, let's stand up for our LGBTQ uh, uh, community, of which I'm proudly a part of. And, uh, as far as I'm concerned, discrimination is discrimination. It doesn't matter whether it's your skin color, your sexual orientation, you know, what have you. It, it hurts. I know, I went through a lot of it. I came out when I was 21. I should say I was forced out, but it wasn't fun. But I'm glad it happened because I'm a stronger man for it. So remember them. Uh, you know of anybody, you have friends that are LGBTQ. Give them a word of encouragement. Tell them to stand with them. Okay. Have a good night and I will talk to you soon. Good night.